Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Harfang. What is a Harfang? Well, first off, apparently it is a snow owl in French. On top of that, it is a reasonably new 3D game edge. Now, this one could really appeal to you if you're all about the coding side of things, although there is some tooling support, as we will see. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it is available at harfang3d.com, which is what you see in front of you. There are a couple of key things to note about this engine. It is open source, and it is commercial. We'll get to exactly what those two details mean in just a second. Harfang is composed of two aspects. There is the Studio, which is a tool for 3D placement. We'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, and then on top of that, we also have the Framework, which is open source. In terms of the uh, editor or the tooling, uh, it's for managing 3D objects, create complete complex 3D scenes. It's got multi-scene support. You can support a variety of different file formats, including FBX, GLTF, OBJ, and more. You can have animations, keyframe shaders, lightweight and high performance. Ultimately, you're, it, it is written in C++. And then on topic of language, while well, the framework part of it, the underlying open source system, uh, which this is very hard to read because of the background graphic they happen to choose here, uh, this is open source and multi-language. Now, Harfang itself it was written with C++. It should be high performance, but you have multiple language options. The star of the show seems to be Python. Uh, so a lot of the examples are in Python, but you can also work in Go and Lua as well as C++. So if you're looking for a code first, uh, especially if you're looking for a code first 3D engine for Python, there's not a lot of choices out there. Uh, and this could be one of the best options amongst them. Uh, the funny thing about the website is they are very catered towards like scientific computing and uh, engineering examples and so on. But as I understand it, Harfang was actually started uh, by demo scene coders as a game engine. So they've kind of transitioned more towards the uh, you know, professional application development 3D side of things, but there's no reason why you can't create games in it. So you do have things like physics system, uh, the scene API, it is component based by the way, there is an audio API, it does have virtual reality support, and you've got two rendering pipelines, one for low end machines, one for AAA uh, with screen space global illumination and reflections as well, uh, and support for user shaders, uh, user pipeline shaders in there as well. Uh, it works on Windows, Windows 64, ARM, uh, Linux, and uh, ARM64, so no Mac in there, uh, and no consoles either. Uh, works with uh, OpenGL ES, DirectX 11, Wayland, OpenGL, and Vulkan. And again, uh, you support those four major languages there, C++, Python, Golang, Lua, and there are more coming soon. It is entirely open source. Uh, it's just, it is open source under the GPL or the LGPL v3 license, which definitely have some uh, strings connected to them. Uh, the editor side of things, the studio is not open source. One of things to be aware of. So they're kind of going with the, say, the Coco's creator sort of mark um, model here. And again, they're very much focusing it towards scientific type computing, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't use this for games. Uh, Harfang Studio, again, is the uh, studio side of things. We're going to go check that guy out right now. So here it is. This is Harfang Studio. Now, you would mostly use this uh, just to compose and create your 3D scene, and then everything else will be handled in code. I'll show you what some of the code looks like in just a moment. There's not actually a ton to show uh, in this editor. Uh, the performance is fine. Uh, I find perfectly okay. This is one of the downloadable examples that you can get. This is uh, inside of a Range Rover. Uh, gets a little, little chunky textured on the inside, but gives you an idea of what you do. So obviously you can place things in the scene, move them around. So let's select the, the Range Rover. There you can see you're getting real-time lighting, real-time shadowing, and so on. And the other thing to notice here is that this is a component-based game engine. So over here, you've got your scene graph, pretty typical. Uh, so you can add new things to your scene. Basically, it's a camera, an object, or a light. Um, and then generally, once you have an object in your scene, you add components to your object. Your objects can be things like a physics controller, you can add a script to it, and so on, or obviously you can import a 3D model. You also have tools here for exporting out your scene, so you can export out as an OBJ file um, or as a GLTF file. So you could actually use this uh, scene editor to make GLTF scenes and not use their underlying framework at all. And that's kind of the gist of the editor. It's pretty straightforward. You see here, I'm using a non-commercial trial. Uh, there are some options on the pricing side of things. We'll get back to that uh, in just, actually, let's do that right now. So if you're wondering about what exactly this costs, uh, individuals completely free uh, for non-commercial use. Uh, so the trial is 15 days full access to all features. So if you want to see everything that is available, and then if you want to use this in commercial use or non-open source use, so if you want to move away from the uh, GPL license, which is going to make you have to open source all of your code, uh, it's 30 euro a month. 
So that is the idea behind it. So again, there are multiple licenses for multiple different reasons. The commercial license, the commercial license frees you from having to use the LGPL, GPL licensing, which again, forces your code to be open. If you're working on an open source free project though, you can use this guy completely for free. Uh, so yeah, that is it. It is uh, available up on GitHub. You check it out. There's a couple of different repositories available that are interesting. Uh, the first one we've got here is again, Harfang 3D itself. This is the source code for the actual project. It is updated uh, quite continuously. So there are a number of different updates available for it. Uh, it is an active project. You can see here it is 82% C++. So this is pretty much uh, an entire C++ style uh, engine. Again, those are your architecture. So if you're a Mac person, uh, nothing here for you to see. And again, if you want to support consoles or mobile devices, this one is not for you either. Uh, the instructions for going ahead and building things are all available here as well. Now, the interesting thing you may want to also check out, there's a number of tutorials to get you up and going. And there's also these uh, samples. Again, if you go back to the website, uh, you're going to find, uh, I think it's under the showcase here, you've got a couple of different samples available. So there's a dogfighter sandbox example, uh, a digital twin example, the uh, VR example here, uh, and Snooker, if you want to just go ahead and check out the code here. So this Snooker game, for example, is written entirely using Python uh, 3 with the Harfang framework. Uh, and as you saw earlier on, there's the dogfight uh, code there available. Um, I'm not sure which one was this. I think it was actually written in multiple languages. Again, it is available up on GitHub as well. The samples are under the GPL v3 license. Um, so if you want to download them, modify them, work with them, uh, it won't cost you uh, anything in that regard, but you do have to contribute your code changes back. Uh, um, well, yeah, so if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, the code is available here. So you can hear the instructions on how to go about running it. We jump in here, for example, let's go check out the source code. Uh, and then you're going to find a number of different uh, things here. So here, for example, is the Python controls for defining an F-16 style aircraft. So if you want to work again with a Python based framework like this, uh, there aren't a ton of them out there. I've covered a few of them on the channel in the past. Now, this was done a long time ago. I really need to do an update of all of these language-based game engine roundups, but the thing is, Python doesn't change that that much. So in the 3D space, the biggest ones you're looking at, Blunder Game Engine doesn't exist anymore. So it's UPBGE, which is a fork of the Blunder Game Engine. And then you've got Panda as well. Plus, you've got binding some popular 3D engines out there, such as Ogre, uh, et cetera. So realistically, there's not a ton in the Python first 3D gaming space. And the same is true for Go as well. So if you're looking for a code-based framework for working with those, things could be an interesting one to check out back to the sandbox let's go down here find the entry point i believe it is called main so you get an idea of what startup code looks like for this if you wanted to create a code first product code first product using harfang you get an idea of what the code looks like and honestly it looks uh, pretty simple. And the cool thing is you can actually add scripting. The documentation has this. So if you wrote it, say, in Go, but you wanted to have Lua or Python scripting, there's actually language there for you. You can actually even have it, say, in Lua with Lua scripting if you wanted, or Lua with Python scripting, etc. So if you're looking to work with these kind of frameworks, that option is there. Also, of course, you can use C++ with this guy. And that really is that. Now, again, they don't really focus on the uh, 3D side, or the, sorry, the gaming side of things. This is just more as a generalized tool. They're aiming it towards like industry professionals, uh, designers, engineers, and so on. But also here, 3D simulations, interactive 3D, VR, AR, so on. So obviously that encompasses games as well. Uh, it's an interesting product, again, split into two parts. You've got the studio for composing your scenes. You can export that out and then use them in the framework. You can ignore the studio completely and author 100% in something like Python, Max, or Maya, and then import it into Harfang itself. Again, you do have a variety of language options. This is free. Uh, it is a uh, GPL licensed or LGPL, depending on which version you are working with. Uh, but there is a commercial license available as well for 30 euro a month. So if you want to commercialize your work, that option is there. And then on top of that, they do have some documentation to get you up and going. Quick start materials. I think there are some video tutorials as well. So example, if you want to learn about that scripting I was talking about where you can actually communicate uh, embed a script inside of another script, so Python inside of Lua, or vice versa. You can actually see here 
This is sending Python to an embedded Lua, and here is Lua embedded to Lua itself, which is actually kind of neat. So that is Harfang 3D. I'm curious to hear uh, what you think of the whole thing. Um, it's an interesting project. Uh, it is a market that is quite full. But again, when it comes to uh, Python and Go and Lua type languages, 3D tools are a little bit less common. So they may actually have a bit of a niche in that space to exist in. Again, you could check it out completely free. Free. The uh, studio does have a full functioning free trial and a free version available for non-commercial. And then the framework itself is open source with a commercial license if the whole GPL or LGPL thing doesn't work for you. I'm curious, what do you think of Harfang? Have you checked it out? Are you going to check it out? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.